Welcome back to the David Pakman Show. Welcome back to the show. David Pakman here. Glad you are with us today. A little bit later on, we'll be speaking with Seth Manukin, who is from Vanity Fair. He has uncovered a lot of this new information. There's this hoax out, and it's now been uncovered as such that uh, an English doctor purported to connect MMR vaccines with cases of autism in children. It turned out it was completely bogus. We'll also talk to Jackson Katz a little bit later on in the show. With great interest, I watched uh, CPAC. This is the conservative, what would we call it, Lewis? A conservative round, uh, what, what? I don't even know how to describe it, but in short, conservatives go to Washington, D.C., and they do stuff, and typically not much comes out of it. Some interesting things did happen. Number one is that Dick Cheney was called a war criminal. This is, I actually found this kind of interesting because there was an undercurrent at CPAC this year that involved some actual traditional conservatism. And I know if you look at the Tea Party, they can't even get politics straight. They don't have the slightest idea what is going on. Neoconservatism, a lot of pro-war conservatism. It's been a long time since we really got any inkling that traditional conservatism still existed. And judging from what happened at CPAC, and again, these might have been just liberal protesters that got in, or rather protesters who believe in logic and reason as opposed to conservative propaganda, Dick Cheney goes up there and uh, he gets heckled. And of course, before the heckling, there was a very strong USA chant because, Lewis, what's more American? Oh, here we let's continue it. Mercy. <laughs> All right, sit down and shut up. <laughs> yeah. All right, so not much reaction, but you'd like to see that. And really, the, the Go USA chance, I mean, it, are we at the point, ladies and gentlemen, where a man who manipulated an entire national security situation for the gain of his former for-profit employer uh, repeated that Obama is making us less safe after he left office without any evidence, simply in an irresponsible way, and shot a man in the face? That is that is American. That warrants USA chance now. Is that where we're at, Lewis? Uh, at CPAC, I guess it does. So at least someone with some sense of logic and reason there yelling out war criminal. Hey, and it's alleged war criminal. I'm not going to fall into that ad hominem type of thing. It is only an allegation that now is supported by many, many countries. The CPAC straw poll. They always have this informal poll for who would CPAC like to see as the Republican nominee in 2012. Ron Paul won for the second conservative year. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the CPAC poll is consistently worthless. In other words, we can deduce nothing from who wins the CPAC poll. I think that that's what we learned. I can't think of anything else. The only two people receiving more than 10 percent of the CPAC straw poll were Ron Paul and then Mitt Romney. Now, Mitt Romney, we've been saying, actually has a shot to be the Republican nominee. I believe his Mormonism will become a problem. I believe that the fact that he actually was involved in a health care reform package while our governor here in Massachusetts that was successful, that has left Massachusetts as the one state with the least percentage of uninsured people in the Republican Party, I, I know it's hard to believe that actually counts against you. And Carl Rove and others have said he might have to distance himself from that plan. Sad. And Strange, yeah. Donald Trump, by the way, he knows that uh, Ron Paul has absolutely no shot. Now, why, why was he even at CPAC? I don't know. Apparently, even though Donald Trump, Donald Trump has said a bunch of stuff over the years, including... I think he's been a terrible president, perhaps the worst president in the history of this country. He said that about George W. Bush, but now he's speaking at CPAC. I don't really care about Donald Trump. I think he represents a lot of, uh, he confirms the amount of power that just declaring bankruptcy a few times and amassing a personal fortune gives you in the Republican Party. That's for sure. But he actually went over to CPAC. He spoke. And what he said about Ron Paul, to me, rang pretty true. Let me play that for you here. 
So I have a reputation for telling it like it is. Uh-oh. So I have a reputation for telling it like it is. I'm known for my candor. I've had a lot of great victories. And I may be willing to put that to work. I mean, I wish that, frankly, I wish there was a candidate that I saw that would be fantastic, because I love what I'm doing. In fact, I have a great club that's 15 minutes away. By the way, Ron Paul cannot get elected. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah, the crowd doesn't like it, but obviously Donald Trump is completely right. Somebody like Ron Paul. I mean, here's just some numbers. Ron Paul's co uh, political contributions in 2008, individual contributions made up 99% of his contributions. Political Action Committee contributions made up statistically less than 1%, about $18,000. John McCain, for example, over a million bucks in these P2 